Hi guys, Mygrew here. This is my in-depth guide for hard clue scrolls. In this guide, I'm going to break down a lot of the different hard clues, my setup, what I use, and how I get to places efficiently. Now with Double Surge and the Treasure Totem, I'm getting over 25 hard clues per hour completed. That's a hell of a lot of hard clues every single hour, and I can't stress how good this totem and this Double Surge is for clue scrolls. That being said, let's get into the guide. Starting out, a lot of people ask me where I actually get my hard clues, and I get those from Hellhounds. I do use an Odak Coil at Hellhounds, and it absolutely melts them. You don't have to use an Odak Coil, but it will increase the amount of clues you get per hour. The typical time it takes me to get 25 hard clues with an Odak Coil is between 30 minutes and an hour. And I'll say more times than not, it's normally around 40 to 50 minutes. So a perfect time in the middle, in the average, would be 45 minutes for 25 hards doing it this way. It will take you a little bit longer if you're not using an ODAC coil, so expect it to take maybe an average of an hour without an ODAC coil. So depending on how much you want to spend and how efficient you want to be, you can use the coil to save probably about 25% of your time because the coil does hit a lot on these hellhounds. I did a few timings and examples on stream and such, gathering hard glues, and this is pretty much the average right here. 45 minutes, 25 hard glues with a coil. That's, what? <laughs> 1 minute 20. Okay, thank you, Totem. I like you now. Thank you, game. I appreciate you. Two puzzle steps in one clue, and it went from 5.32 to 8.13. So it was like 2 minutes 40 with two puzzle steps. It's nuts. One minute, seven seconds. All right, I'll take that one. I bought myself a Passage of the Abyss for 30 mil to improve my clue setup even more. This combines six pieces of jewelry into one item. Then you keep buying the item, select the jewelry you want, and teleport wherever you want. What this then does is frees up some more inventory spaces for me to perfect my hard clue preset, I guess. That way I can save a bit more space and get a couple more best in slot teleports. Dig Site Pendant was the worst one. Everything else I could just buy, but Dig Site Pendant I had to make myself, so I bought the rubies, bought the gold bars, made ruby necklaces, and then enchanted them. The jewelry I put in my Passion of the Abyss is a Ring of Duelin, Amelo Glory, Games Necklace, Combat Bracelet, Skills Necklace, and Dig Site Pendant. I'm going to be breaking down each step of hard clues that I get often. There'll be one or two that I just couldn't get footage for. But while I'm breaking down those steps, I'll then explain when I use each of these teleportation jewelry. I'm actually really happy. So I did 25 hard clues in an hour with some mistakes. Like I definitely could have done way better. If I didn't make as many mistakes, it definitely would have been more consistent. But 25 is the best I've ever done. Pause it. Oh, mate. We started at 31 clues and we got four left. That was 27 clues. 27 clues in an hour. What? That's, that's nuts! To put this into perspective, before I got Double Surge and before I had the Totem, I was getting 18 to 19 clues done an hour, averaging 3 to 4 minutes a hard clue. Now I'm averaging just over 2 minutes a hard clue, and I'm getting 25 to 27 done an hour. That's around 8 more clues every hour with this. Absolutely fantastic. First things first, what is a Totem of Treasure and how do you get it? A Totem of Treasure is from the new land out of time. You can get Totems built on Anachronia and these require you to get the top part, the middle part and the base part, combine it together and then you got to charge it up every week. You get the top piece of the Totem of Treasure by doing Big Game Hunter. The middle piece is from the Agility course and the base reward is for finding 20 Ancient Zygomites around and about. Once you charge it up, you get some divination XP and it'll last a week until the weekly reset. Then you have to charge it again. Once it's charged up, it reduces the amount of steps required for clue scrolls by one. This is going to essentially speed up clues alongside the double surge codex now available as well. Should be able to get a lot more hards done an hour as I just showcased. When it comes to my setup, I've done it in a bit of a different way. Someone commented on my easy clue videos suggesting this and it sounded like quite a good idea. Instead of me naming every single item, I've numbered them. This way, in the description of this video, I can put numbers to what item each number corresponds to. Then I can also add a wiki page for every single item. If you're unaware of what one of these items is, check the description down below, click that wiki page, and you'll learn everything you need to know about that item. 
every single one of the items that I have labeled have a use. They teleport me somewhere or they do sign in particular. And obviously there is a couple of groups of items, like how number five is the whole Globetrotter outfit, or number 11 is the whole camouflage outfit. So I've done lines corresponding showing that is like the whole thing. I'm not going to tell you what every single one of these items do here. I'm going to break down every clue step I've had within the last 250 hards and just say how I get to every single one of them. I believe I've got nearly all of the hard clue steps. There's going to be a couple that I just haven't been given due to RNG. But I've tried to cover most of the clue steps in here to give people as much help as possible. I'm going to say what I use to teleport there, how I do it, and just exactly what it entails. So without further ado, let's get into those clue steps. I'm going to speak through nearly all of the hard clue steps and how I do them efficiently. I'm going to leave timestamps in the description for every single step in this video. So if you're struggling with a specific step, you can go straight to that one from the description. This is going to be a long video. I will be laying every single one out like this. I'll show you Alt 1 to the left side and the clue to the right side. If you don't know what Alt 1 is, it's something that helps with an overlay that reads your screen and helps with clues and some other stuff. I will leave a link to Alt 1 in the description. You can download that and use that to help you solve your puzzles. I remember back in the day I used to go on tip.it or runehq to help me with my clues. Essentially, this is what it does, but instead of you having to input something or do a screenshot or whatever, it just reads your screen and shows you it as an overlay. Alt 1 is also allowed, and even some of the mods use it on their personal streams, like Mod Lee when he does clues. A lot of people don't like using it, and that's fair enough, but I personally use it, and I'll be showcasing it in here as well. This is the first clue I'm going to speak about. A nice, easy one to start. Eagle's Peak Lodestone Coordinate Clue. Let's get to it. All I do is teleport to the Eagle's Peak Lodestone. When I arrive at the Eagle's Peak Lodestone, I start running south. As soon as I start running south, I surge and then bladed dive to the bottom of the furthest flower. Then you can use your Meerkat special attack to skip the wizard. I put that on my action bar to make it even easier to press. Then you'll get a new clue. This one takes a little bit longer to get to. It's the four blades clue, which is the Lumbridge Mill. You can either use the combat bracelet to the champion guild, or you can teleport to Lumbridge. I personally teleport to Lumbridge as the bladed dives and stuff are easy from there. Once you get to the mill, you just open up the doors, right click the ladder, go straight to the top, and then there is some boxes right there. Search those and you'll be done. Next up is the anagram for Gulag Run. This is Ulug Na. What I do for this one is activate my Passage of the Abyss, select my Ring of Dolin, go to Castle Wars, which is option two on the Ring of Dolin, surge out, surge down, bladed dive over to him, talk to him, get the puzzle, and then obviously you just spend the time solving the puzzle. Alt 1 can also help you solve puzzles, and it's really, really nice for that. This is one of my personal favourites, the West RD Dig Spot. It is this picture glue right here. What I do for this one is I store chip teleport tabs in my Evil Dave spellbook. So I activate my Evil Dave spellbook, go to number four, double surge bladed dive on our way to the dig spot in West RD, then dig there and you're done. This coordinate clue to take you to this island where the ogres are on, north of Feldip Hills. I normally just use my jacket and teleport straight here because it does take a while to get there. But if you don't have the jacket, you can use a fairy ring to get here fairly quickly. You want to use the fairy ring code ALP. It'll put you in this cave. Then you surge and climb out of this cave. If you run southeast, you'll then get to a tunnel that you can climb in and that will take you to the island. The tunnel has like some rocks and stuff around it, so you have to run around the rocks and everything. It just takes a long time to get to, and it's pretty annoying because you can't really get a straight surge or straight bladed dive like ever. That's why I jacket this one because it's pretty annoying. This one is how to breed scorpions. What I do for this is use the mana farm telly in my spellbook that I've unlocked from the Arduin tasks. Then I'll just surge and bladed dive towards it, go upstairs one level and search that bookcase right there. Next up is this picture clue. This one is at the observatory. You can chip watchtower teleport tabs with the Evil Dave spellbook and store them in there. And that's how I get here. I press number one on the Evil Dave spellbook, run towards the southeast, bladed dive down there and then surge upwards. Then you can search the box. Sometimes I do make a mistake and I'll surge a little tiny bit too early and I'll surge diagonally. 
If this happens, just click on the box and surge again and you'll surge towards the box and it will be about the same time. Panic at the Heart of the Haunted Woods. The Globetrotter outfit helps a ton here because I don't have to take anything off. The Globetrotter outfit counts as me wearing everything for remote clues, including this one. If you don't have the Globetrotter outfit and every time you get this one, I'd advise going to the bank, putting everything in the bank, taking out the clue scroll, some weapons, and a portable fairy ring. Then coming to do this one. This one's nice and easy. I have ALQ on my favorite, so I just press number one as it's my first favorite with a portable fairy ring. Run over to the two mushrooms where you do the emote in between. Kill the double agent and we're done. This is why the Globetrotter outfit is so good. Another super easy and lovely one to see is the Lumberyard. All I do is use my Globetrotter arm guards to teleport to the Lumber Mill with number six. Then you run round bladed dive as you pass the first tree, so you can bladed dive directly where you sneak in. Sneak in, run around the tree, surge towards the grate, and then search it. If you don't have the Globetrotter arm guards, you can still teleport here with the scrolls, it's just going to take up an inventory space. Next up is another coordinate clue. It's the Trollheim coordinate clue, but the one that is near the entrance to the Troll City, and not the one directly on top of Trollheim. This one's a lot longer. When I have 4 out of 4 my jacket, I sometimes even skip this one because it does take a little while to get to. Either way, with the runes in my two rune pouches, it allows me to have all the teleports, so I'll teleport to Trollheim. When I get to Trollheim, I'll then just do the couple of obstacles along the way, climbing down the first wall, then going down the slope and climbing down the second wall, which then allows you to surge a bladed dive up to the spot, press your meerkat special attack, skip the wizard, and you're good to go. This is the other coordinate clue for Trollheim, and this one is so easy. Again, my rune pouches have all the teleport runes needed, so I just teleport straight to Trollheim. It pretty much teleports you on the spot. You may have to move closer to the slope, then just use your meerkats to skip it. Dance of the Cat Door Pyramid is quite a hard one. The scepter that you can use to teleport straight there only has six charges and it's pretty annoying to recharge. So I opt to go for the camouflage outfit, although that does take up five inventory spaces. Either way, what I do is I put the camouflage outfit on, right click the head, teleport to Pyramid Blunder, which takes me where the scepter would. Then I just run over to the cat door pyramid while putting my stuff back on, use my emote, kill the double agent, and you're done. This is probably my favorite clue because it's the fastest one I can do. It has the perfect surge bladed dive combo. And this is the picture clue south of the Legends Guild. What I do is use my portable fairing, teleport to BOR, which again is in my favorite, so I can just click the number. When you get there, you want to walk one square southeast of the fairy ring. Once you're stood in this square, do one surge and then you can bladed dive directly over to the spot that you need to dig in. Then you can dig right in that spot. As you can see in that one, that is the worst circumstance when there's a bear right on top of it. It's better to right click then, but I was a bit slow at realizing the bear was there. Next up is blowing a raspberry in the fishing guild, a nice easy emote clue. What I do for this one is I have my Grace of the Elves attuned to the deep sea fishing hub. If you right click your Grace of the Elves, teleport to deep sea fishing. You can then right click the boat, leave, run to the bank, do your emote, kill that agent, done. There's another coordinate clue here, which is the dig one in the Duel Arena. Again, very, very easy. All I do is activate my Passage of the Abyss, go to the Duel Arena with my Ring of Duelin on option one. Once I get here, I'll bladed dive, double surge to get there nice and quickly. Then when I get to the top of the stairs, bladed dive is pretty much off a cooldown and I'll bladed dive into the exact spot, use my meerkats, skip the wizard, and we're good. The next one is the coordinate clue on the Karumja docks. I think that's the easiest way to describe it. What I do for this one is I use my Grace of the Elves, which is attuned to overgrown idols. This overgrown idol is on Karumja. This makes it very easy to get there. You just bladed dive and surge upwards. Then when you enter, your bladed dive will just be coming off a cooldown. So then you can bladed dive to the window that you dig underneath of. Then you can just use your meerkat special scroll to skip the wizard and you're done. Another nice chill one. Salute at the banana plantation on Karumja. I just use my Passage of the Abyss, use the Amalo Glory and the second option on the Glory to go to Karumja. I walk in a tiny bit, then use my emote. The reason why I walk in a tiny bit is because if you emote sometimes exactly where you teleport in, 
Yuri can then spawn outside of his normal zone and he won't actually give you your clue. So if you stand in a little bit, you're guaranteed to get your next clue with no issues. This one is another coordinate clue that is south of Tavoli in the wheat field. The way I get here is just option number one on the Slayer Cape. Then I can bladed dive and surge southwest and you'll get inside the field. Then you want to right click and walk southwest of the Scarecrow. Use your special attack of your meerkats and you're done. This clue is the laugh at Jockle's tent in the mountain camp that is southeast of Relica. What I do to get here is I use my Slayer Helm, which is imbued with Slayer Rings, to teleport to the Fremenic Slayer Dungeon. Then as always, I Bladed Dive and surge up there, climb over the wall. Your Bladed Dive is just about to come off of cooldown around this time. So you can Bladed Dive onto the ramp, but I would not surge or Bladed Dive anymore, otherwise you'll be in combat and you need to do an emote. I run towards the 10 and pretty much as I reach the 10, I'm out of combat so I can just do the emote, kill the double agent, and then I'm good to go. Something pretty cool to note here, which isn't that significant, but it's something. This is the Stone of Jazz buff actually working here. It gives you 4% more damage. So the Stone of Jazz buff will kill the double agent quicker if you're interested in that. Another coordinate clue in the middle of Mauritania. This one's pretty easy to get to. All you gotta do is go to the Fairy Ring BKR, run slightly southwest, go on top of this log, use your meerkat scroll to get rid of the wizard, and you're good. Blow a kiss between the tables in Shiloh Village Bank. What I do for this one is use number six on my Slayer Cape, surge down the bridge, go down the stairs, make sure that I don't do any more bladed dives or surges, otherwise I'll be in combat. Run over to the bank so I'm out of combat as I get to the bank. Then I'll use my ammo, summon the double agent, kill him and you're done. Next up, another coordinate clue to dig south of Yanil. There really doesn't seem to be an amazing way to do this. I normally just go to the Anil Lodestone. I guess you can go and use number four on your Globetrotter gloves too. They both would work, but I find the Lodestone just to be a bit more convenient. Just do some surges and bladed dives when you're free from trees so you can get straight runs. When you get here, use your Meerkat special attack to skip the wizard and you're done. This one isn't as bad as it used to be and this is one of the coordinate clues in Taranwin. Now the Taranwin Quiver has unlimited charges from the tasks. It's not bad, you just go to number 3 on the Quiver, surge up, go through the dense forest, bladed dive round, go through the trees, across the trap, you'll never foul if you're wearing the Quiver. Then you can just use your Meerkats in the dig spot to skip the wizard and you're good to go. The other coordinate clue for Tranwin is pretty similar and also utilizes your Tranwin Quiver. So if you've done the task, you want to teleport all your Quiver to number 6. Then you run south of the camp, cross the log, and then you go southwest until you get to the location. You do need to go over a trap. Again, it won't hurt you at all if you've done the task and you're wearing your Quiver. Pretty easy one to be honest, now the Quiver has unlimited charges like I said. Next up is I eat its chart hints to you. This anagram is the custodian in Narda. One of the reasons why we had the desert amulet alongside another one in Narda, which I didn't get footage for, which is digging near the cactus. Do it exactly the same way, just use your desert amulet to get here. Once you get here with the desert amulet, just talk to the custodian. He'll give you a puzzle box, solve the puzzle, and you're good to go. Next up is the riddle where you have to dig on the fire near the glider on Karamja. Very, very easy one with the Grace of the Elves. You just right click your Grace of the Elves, teleport to the overgrown idols, which you can have your max guild garden set to, surge and bladed dive over to the fire and just dig. Next up is Bulkoi, which is the anagram of by look in the tree gnome village. I use my portable spirit tree. Activating that, pressing number one takes you to the tree gnome village. Then I just go up the ladder, speak to Bulkoy, speak to him again, type in 13, enter that through, and you're done. Another one of my personal favorites, it's the Yanil Timbo Tree dig spot in the far corner of Yanil. For this one, I teleport to the watchtower. If you speak to the mage at the top of the watchtower, he can then redirect your watchtower teleport to go into the middle of your nil and not the watchtower. Once I'm there, I walk one to the northeast and surge. 
Then I continue running until I can get a straight line of a bladed dive into the building, followed by a surge. As you can see here, I line up my bladed dive with the door. Then I'll bladed dive and surge and go straight into the building, right where I got a dig. Dig next to this stall and complete the glue. Identify the back of his overacting brother is the next one. You just got to talk to Hamid in the Duel Arena. Super simple one, I use my Passage of the Abyss to go to the Duel Arena with the Ring of Duel in, option one. Talk to Hamid, solve his puzzle, done done. This one is in Gulten Off. It's quite annoying to get to, but with the teleport that you can use your Globetrotter gloves for, it's not bad. I just use my Globetrotter gloves, number four teleport, which is the Gu Ten Off scroll. Go through the gate, go through obviously all the obstacles till you get to the end. Then you just use your meerkats at the end to skip the wizard. Next up is digging by the purple smoke, which is where the moss giants are in Varric sewers. The way I get here is I just use my slayer cape and do option three on that cape. That will take me to Vanica, who's right next to the agility pipe to take me into the Varric sewers. Then I'll go through that pipe, go where the cauldron is, dig behind that cauldron, and that's the clue done. Next up is the Arendar clue, which is a coordinates clue. Again, you have to dig on top of some red spider's eggs. The way I get here is I use the second option on a traveler's necklace to get to the outpost. And then I run over to Arendar, obviously surging and bladed diving where I can. I believe it's slightly faster to use a Sitphage circuit ring or master quest cape to get here. But I don't know what to take out of my preset for this. So I just use my traveler's necklace as that has additional uses like the wizard's tower, whereas the Sipfane circuit ring only has that function. This one is the anagram of fair enough, which is I Faffy run. All you gotta do for this one is use your fairy ring to go into Xanaris. If you have a portable fairy ring, you just right click it, teleport to Xanaris. Once you get here, just search and bladed dive up to the northwest. Talk to her fair enough, she'll give you a puzzle, do the puzzle and you're done. Next one is a riddle to talk to Jaren at Port Sarim. Fishing is my trade, gives it away easy. All I do for this one is literally go to the Port Sarim lodestone that's directly south of it, talk to him and you're done. I'm showcasing every clue. I know this one is really self-explanatory, but might as well showcase it. Up next is the panic at the White Wolf Mountain clue. There's also another one where you have to talk to the gnome glider up here. Both of these are done the exactly same way. I have my Grace of the Elves attuned to Overgrown Idols. I teleport there, surge directly towards the glider, talk to the gnome, do option number two on the glider system to get here. Once you're here, just do the emote if it's the emote clue and kill the double agent. If it's the other one, you need to talk to him and do the puzzle he gives you. Easy peasy. Next up is this coordinate clue really far west of Karamja. All you gotta do for this one is use a fairy ring and go to CKR. Bloody dive down towards the rubble, climb up the rock face, surge over the bridge so you don't fall through it, then just use your meerkat special attack where you would dig. Then you'll skip the wizard and you're good to go. Here is a coordinate clue to dig in the Kazari jungle. There's another one further down the beach to the far southwest. Both of these are done exactly the same way. Use a fairy ring to go to CJS, then you can surge, a bladed dive, barge, whatever you can do to move faster towards the spot you need to actually dig at. For this one, you just stand southeast of this rock. Use your meerkat scroll to skip the wizard and you're good to go. The one on the beach, you just do the same just above the skeleton. Next up is the one at the yew tree in Edgeville. You can use a ring of respawn to get here with number four. Other ways you can use your Slayer Cape to go to number 9, which is a little bit further, but obviously then you don't need to get a whole other item. Either one works, the Ring of Respawn is slightly closer, but the Slayer Cape works too. Then literally just dig next to the tree. Next up is the Coordinate Clue that is north of the Bandit Camp. Because it's north of the Bandit Camp, the obvious one we're going to do is use the Bandit Camp scroller to then run north. I use my Globetrotter Arm Guards and use option number 2, which is that Bandit Camp scroll. I surge and bladed dive up north, then I use the meerkat scroll to skip the wizard. Next up is the riddle that's often sought out by scholars of history's past. That is an examiner at the dig site. This is the reason why I have a dig site pendant in my Passage of the Abyss. I just use my Passage of the Abyss, use the dig site pendant, go straight here with option three, talk to the examiner, do the puzzle that they give me, and I'm done. Next up is the Lumbridge Castle ones. There is three different ones. There is one where you have to talk to hands going around the outside of Lumbridge Castle. 
another one where you have to search the drawers upstairs in Lumbridge Castle next to the spinning wheel. And another one in the basement of Lumbridge Castle where you have to search the box under the stove. All three of these I just use the Lumbridge lodestone to get to as it's very easy. But then again you can use a Ring of Respawn which is slightly closer and you don't have to leave combat for it. So a Ring of Respawn would work perfectly here as well. If it's the Hans one, he'll just walk around the castle. So once you find him, just talk to him and you're done. The other two, you obviously have to go in Lumbridge Castle for. This coordinate clue is in the Herbal Habitat. You can use the Witch Doctor Mask to get here if you have it. I don't personally own the Witch Doctor Mask. So what I use instead is the Master Farmer Hat. You can teleport to the Herbal Habitat and it takes the Juju Spirit Teleport Bags from your bank. Nice easy way to get here that not everyone knows about. Then I just run down, jump over the vines and use my Meerkat Scroll to skip the wizard. Next up is the coordinate clue northwest of the Herbal Habitat. Now that Overgrown Idols is a thing, they're so good for clues like this. I just teleport to the Overgrown Idols with my Grace of the Elves, which is attuned to it. Then I just run down to the location, use my Meerkat Scroll to skip the wizard, and I'm done. This one's the riddle for the deadly red spider's eggs underneath the Karamcha Volcano. It's actually a really nice way to get here. I use my Dungeoneering Cape to go to the Lesser Demon Resource Dungeon, which is number four. That will teleport you inside the volcano, right close to the spider eggs. Just surge and blade a dive over to the eggs, dig, and you're done. This is another very quick one. Navigating this crate will be a trial riddle, is in Relica. If you use your Fremenic boots that you get from the Fremenic task, it will teleport you right into the middle of Relica. Literally just run south of the market, go into this house, search the crates, and you're done. It's such a quick one. The strange little man who sells armor riddle is Ozzy Ozak in Edgeville. I personally just use the Edgeville Lodestone for this one. Although you can use the Amulet of Glory and it will take you to the middle of Edgeville if you are in combat, then you can play the dive over to him. But most of the time I feel like the Edgeville Lodestone is just as fast. Then you talk to Ozak, do his puzzle, and you're done. Surprising? I bet he is. Is surprising in the Varric Castle. For this one, having the rune pouches filled with all of the runes I need for teleports, I just teleport to Varric Center. Then I surge and bladed dive right up the path into the castle, talk to him, and you're done. This is one of the newer clues, and it's talking about archers losing more than their needles, which is you searching a haystack in the Ranging Guild. All I do for this is use my Passage of the Abyss to do my combat bracelet. Option 4 on the combat bracelet takes you outside the Ranging Guild. Go in, surge over, search that haystack, and you're good. This anagram for R, so I am crossed and, is Ramara du Croissant inside the Piscatorius fishing area. Best way to get here for me is using my Globetrotter gloves and going to number 8, which is a Phoenix Layer teleport. The Phoenix Layer teleport takes you close, just to the southwest. Then you can surge and bladed dive up into the little shortcut, go inside, speak to her, she gives you a puzzle, you solve the puzzle, and you're done. Another anagram for a Zenshi. This is Zanesha, who's the armor store owner. Because I have all of those runes to teleport wherever I need to in my rune pouches, I can teleport to Arduin. This will take you to the marketplace. You literally run south, talk to her, do her puzzle, and you're done. A very nice and easy one. Bow or courtesy at the top of the lighthouse. I just use my Globetrotter arm guards to use the lighthouse teleport scroll, which is number five on the arm guards. Once you use the lighthouse scroll, just go through the door, right click the stairs, go straight up to the top, use your remote and kill the double agent, and then you're done. This anagram of Prof's Lose Wrong Pie is Professor Onglewhip. He is the little gnome at the Wizard's Tower. The way I get here is the Traveler's Necklace. Option one on here takes you right outside the Wizard's Tower. I just surge south into the tower, talk to the professor, do the puzzle he gives me, and we're done with that step. This riddle for Aggie I see is gonna be Draino Village. It's another lovely one to see. I use my Passage to the Abyss, activate my Amulet of Glory, choose option number three to go to Draino Village, and then dig underneath this window. You can even use a bladed dive to get right there. Easy peasy. This riddle is quite a nice one because it doesn't show you the best way to do it on Alt 1. It seems to have reached the end of the line and it's still empty is the Dwarven Mine Minecarts. Best way to do this is actually to use the Dungeoneering Cape's second option. 
This will take you to the mining resource dungeon that's just south of these carts. Then you can search and bladed dive up there, search the cart, and you're done. This is a pretty neat one that I use my Wicked Hood teleport tokens on and my daily Wicked Hood teleports. A coordinate clue for the Kramja jungle where the divination colony is. I use my Wicked Hood to teleport to the nature altar. Then you can just bladed dive and surge to the northeast and you should be in the spot. Then just use your meerkat scroll to skip the wizard and you're done. This anagram or zinc fumes ward is wizard from scone. Again, use the watchtower teleport. You can speak to the wizard in the watchtower to make it go to the middle of your nil. Then you literally just undo the door to the wizard's tower, go into the basement, talk to him, do the puzzle, and you're done. Very easy. Another Shiloh village clue where you have to search the bookcases. The clue has cart roads of the undead, so obviously at Shiloh village. I used the Kromja gloves to teleport to this step because it puts you in the little dungeon that is literally right underneath the bookcase that you need to search. Just climb up the ladder right next to you, go into the house, and search the bookcase. This one really doesn't have a super efficient way to do it. When you get tired of fighting, go deep, deep down until you find an antidote. This is the Yanil dungeon. Easiest way I've found is just to use the Watchtower Teleport with the runes in my rune pouches. Use the little agility shortcut that takes you underneath the walls of Yanil. Go down the dungeon. Cross the agility shortcut, pray at the altar to fall down, bladed dive over to the crate, search that and you're done. But this one does take a bit longer than pretty much any other step. So backpacking or teleporting straight to this one could be quite good. This coordinate clue where the nature grotto is, is a little bit hard to get to, but there is a little bit of a cheaty way. If you've done Temple Dragon and unlocked the shortcut to get to the bottom of the Mortmire Swamp from the top, you can teleport to the fairy ring at the entrance to Mauritania's swamp, which is CKS. With this, you can then right click the entrance and quick travel. This will take you right at the nature's grotto. Sadly, you can't use your meerkat to skip the wizard here. You have to fight it because the grotto is a summoning free zone. Once the wizard's dead, just dig again and you're good to go. If you don't have the shortcut, you're probably best to use the BKR fairy ring code, which takes you to the middle of the swamp and then run down. This coordinate clue at rock grabs has two options. One is just to use the lodestone if you don't have to wait to get out of combat. You can then just surge and bladed dive up and you're there. The other one is using the DKS fairy ring and then running down the mountain. If you're in combat, this saves a little bit of time just so you don't have to get out of combat to use the lodestone. Another one that I use my backpack a fair bit for is must be full of railings clue. This one is where you search the boxes at the place where you do the dwarf cannon quests. I barely ever get this clue, so it really doesn't matter that I skip it when I get it because I always have enough charges. But when I do have to do it or if you need to do it, I use my Passage of the Abyss to use my skills necklace. I choose option number one, which is the fishing guild. Then I surge and bladed dive up to here from the fishing guild. So I didn't actually get the clue for the odd old man, but I do want to showcase how I do it as it's the only thing I use the invitation box for. I use the invitation box to teleport. Then if you use the invitation box while in this instance, it will teleport you out of it. This takes you directly south of the odd old man. You can just search and bladed dive upwards, talk to him, you'll get your puzzle and you'll be able to do it there. These last couple I had to find from very old VODs just to add a couple of extra ones that were missing from all of the footage I had gathered. But I wanted to include these ones as well. This one, small shoe, often found with rod on mushroom, is in the tree gnome stronghold. This and the gnome coach is what I use a lot of portable spirit trees on. This one, obviously, you use the portable spirit tree, go to number two, then you speak to the little gnome trainer at the agility course, you get given a puzzle, you do that. The gnome coach one, you just surge on bladed dive to the northwest, talk to the gnome coach, you get a challenge scroll, and you do that. There's No Worthier Lord is another one that I use my full camouflage outfit for. Because I've got the full camouflage outfit, I don't need the Attuned Crystal Teleport Seed anymore, and the outfit counts as whatever I need to do in Prif. And this is pretty much the only thing in Prif for a hard clue. I just teleport with the outfit to Iowerth, go down, talk to Lord Iowerth, and get the puzzle done. This one is one of the uses of my Luck of the Dwarves. I have to go to Keldegrim. I go to Keldegrim with my Luck of the Dwarves and then I go over the middle building, down into the house where the sculpture is and then I complete his puzzle. I also use my Luck of the Dwarves to teleport to Miscellanea and there's also a puzzle with the Queen that's right here as well. 
another easy one that you get to with the luck of the dwarves. When it comes to what type of clues I use my backpack to re-roll the step of, this clue is the one I use it at the most. Anything wilderness related gets instantly re-rolled with my Globetrotter backpack. I do sometimes get stuck at 4 out of 4 re-rolls because wilderness clues are quite rare. I'm going to skip things like this when I'm stuck at 4 out of 4. Places like the Goblin Village are quite hard to get to and when you speak to General Ben's nose, he then gives you a puzzle on top of that that you have to solve. So backpacking in puzzle steps like this is definitely useful. This will be so much better than keeping your backpack at 4 out of 4. Rerolls definitely help with time. Same as the jacket teleports as I've shown in a couple of the steps. If you've got this far, thank you so much for watching. This is a super long video and I expect people to skip certain parts and find specifically what they want in the description. Same with the setup and stuff. All the information is more in the description and people can find out everything there. I just wanted to make this guide as in-depth as I could for hard clues, what teleports I use, what they do, everything like that. Hopefully this was helpful and at least taught a couple of things to people. Give the video a like if you did enjoy it. This took a hell of a long time to make, so hopefully it was worth it. And until next time, see ya.